Okay. Are we podcasting now? Oh. Okay, really. Is an amazing word. Welcome to Hokey Religion, the Star Wars podcast. We all float down here, Georgie. This episode, we are going to be talking about the fact that we have a new director named for Episode 9, as well as continuing our discussion on the characters of The Last Jedi. This is Tyler. This is Michael. Welcome to the show. Hello. Uh, we survived the apocalypse. <laughs> the, yes, the, the weather of doom. It was bad. It was, it was pretty bad. I think we were both without power for about a week. Hold on, I can't. Stuck on the carpet. Okay. You were stuck right, on the no. carpet? I was stuck on the carpet. Well, my carpet is sticky. I should probably Don't sit in questions. my chair. What? Nothing. <laughs> yeah. So we made it through Irma. The house is still floating. A- floating. Just floating. It's floating. <laughs> floating a what? Uh, down. Away. <laughs> no. I think we were both without power for about a week, which yep. sucked, but thankfully it's back. Our whole town smells like sewage because the... <laughs> it does. Smell. I woke up this morning thinking that... My kids had like pooped in a bunch of diapers and left them around everywhere. It like, was bad. How, how often do they do that? <laughs> Poop know. in a bunch of different diapers and leave them around. But this is just this is my life. Yeah, well, welcome to being a parent. <laughs> yeah, this is the things you have to worry about. You'll find diapers. These things go through your head, and it's <laughs> stuff you actually have to take seriously. How many diapers this time? <laughs> you have to take it seriously sometimes, because <clears throat> it's just that's just how stuff works. That's how it works. Yeah, and then I went out to my car and it yeah, smelled like... It continued to smell and then you went Who to work. Who left all these diapers in my car? <laughs> then you went to work and there were diapers there and... Everybody's leaving these diapers <laughs> everywhere. So yeah, we live in a sewage town now, which is fantastic. So don't come visit South uh, Southern Florida or Central Florida or any of Florida ever because why? <laughs> we still live here. <laughs> it's so bad. <laughs> Is that place nearby still flooded? The place that they were talking the about? The regular old neighborhood in the middle of not near any lakes or bodies of water? Yes, yes that one. It was as of a couple of days ago um, over the weekend, though it look, looks like it either someone drained it or it drained itself. Okay. I yeah. guess either way is good. Just a neighborhood behind a Best Buy. The neighborhood that people had to take canoes to get to their houses. Yes. I guess we're in fucking Pocahontas or something. <laughs> I guess I guess she had to take a canoe to get to her house. And there was a canoe at some point. I don't know. I'm not a Pocahontas expert. A Pocahontas? <laughs> a Pocahontas <expert. laughs> That's. I think that's something else. A Pocahontas expert? <laughs> Maybe. Uh oh. Ask John. <laughs> Urban Dictionary. <laughs> so, episode nine. It's still happening. <laughs> it's still on. It hasn't don't, been canceled. Don't worry. They're they're still going to do it. Still there's it's it's a movie. It's still a movie. Still a and movie. as everyone probably knows by now, JJ Abrams is the director and writer or writing it with someone else but Yeah, writing it with his stupid Didn't we talk about this last time? His stupid just wait. Last partner? episode we talked about the fact that Oh, that was Colin's that writing. Colin partner. was leaving, and Colin's writer was not so great. Was so the monster now, truck's writer? <laughs> yes. So now, so now we have J.J. Abrams back, and of course, the official statement on that is oh, he's returning was... to complete the sequel trilogy as writer and director of Episode Nine, and he will co-write with the the film with Chris Terrio or Terrio. Yes, which <clears throat> is fine. It's all we fine. will discuss. We're fine. Yes. So no, we don't have to discuss. Everyone, Why do we have to discuss it. I want to talk about it. Because it's a podcast? This is, this is what we do. We, we discuss things, whether anyone's listening or not. Oh. And then we go on about our lives and discuss other things. Yeah, nobody's listening. So the internet was freaking out, and uh, I saw a really shitty... As they do. Um, yeah, really shitty petition to not have him as director, like anyone cares. <laughs> um, I have no problem petition. with this. And I mean, we discussed this last episode. It, I, I think... Did it have like 100 signatures? <laughs> like <laughs> When I first saw it, it had a 35. It's like a neighborhood petition yeah. to change a light bulb or something. <clears throat> yeah. So, I mean, we discussed last episode. It it really only made sense for it to be Ryan Johnson or J.J. Abrams. And I don't understand. 
I guess a lot of other people wanted a new director or a woman to direct it or a myriad of other things because everyone has their own opinion. But if you think about the timeline of how they need to get going on this, like right now, Mm -hmm. did did they really have any other choice than going with Ryan or JJ? Well, it's not just timeline. It's proven Timeline, knowledge, and able to just like go ahead and start now and working on it. And they know that they can trust them to work with them. I think that's the biggest thing. Yeah. Part of it. Yeah. I think that's the biggest thing because, I mean, look at the, look at what's happened so far with Maybe. all these people that they've chosen. Possibly. Hasn't yeah. really worked out. Um, and not to mention that, you know, JJ well, they probably... Need a script. They need a script finished like now because they're supposed to start production and not that long. Yeah. So JJ Next at least year, already right? knows the story. Next year they're supposed to start it. Yeah. JJ knows the story. He helped create the beginning of the story. I mean, he worked with Ryan in transitioning the story already. Mm-hmm. And apparently from sources, it was thrown around that Ryan Johnson was do, would, would do it. But again, sources allegedly that he turned them down. Yeah. It was rumored that he was asked, but then he turned it down, <clears throat> which, which, you know, I respect. I mean, he's, I would love to do a star Wars movie. Probably. Okay. You want to do this one? Eh, well, you know, another time. Eh. Not back to back after that. I'm sure it's. <laughs> I'm sure he's tired. You've got to be tired after doing that for so long. See, that's what surprises me a little bit about JJ coming back because it. He just went through that just a few JJ years ago. JJ never seems to stop. A year, ever. right? 2015 was when production. No, well, maybe not when production started, but when. Right. Yeah. Right. When production started on Force Awakens, yeah. was that 2015 but or 14? I think JJ's been through it wasn't so many that long ago. productions of this size that that's probably just his life now. I mean, that's just yeah, what he maybe. does. I mean, Ryan, what was I mean, other than, between? other than Looper and some other, you know, a few, a handful of, you know, very few other things, Ryan has really been very indie film, smaller productions, uh, you know, not, yeah. not the size of Looper or now Star Wars. Yeah. So I'm sure with that not being, Super your wheelhouse that probably is very tiring, very different from what you're used to. Just off, uh, just you know, from my non involved point of view. <laughs> <clears throat> but I, I'm glad that it was JJ and not some other person that they're gonna have to fight with. I completely enjoyed The Force Awakens and have no issue with him taking over. Yeah. I think the only caveat to that is him hitting the tone that it seems that they're going with the last Jedi. And, and if that tone is continuing into nine. Yeah, I guess that would be interesting. Cause I, I, the, I trust Ryan Johnson with that tone. Well, I know and the, he's going to be setting that tone, but that tone's going to be completely different from what JJ did with the force. Well, because Awakens. that was his, that was his tone. JJ's in, tone. In la, no, no, I'm saying the tone that's in The Last Jedi, that's that's Ryan Johnson. That's, that's, yes. So that's what he's they're taking it in a darker direction, which we've it seems to it seems to be going. Yeah. That tone, it will be interesting going from having Force Awakens JJ to last to episode nine JJ. That's and a good point. With I wonder, what that tone is. I wonder if it will be different from Force Awakens or if JJ's gonna go back and it'll feel similar to it, Force Awakens. It'd be interesting. I, yeah, I don't know. But I know I, that was I, the I one thing sure. that was the one thing I was concerned about was tone with Colin, which, you know, that's not a thing anymore. So, yeah, <laughs> I mean, I don't, I mean, I, we've talked about this. I, yeah, yeah. I'm way more confident now <laughs> in this movie than. Yes. I was worried before. about Colin because it's of Colin being Colin. Now I'm like, all right, episode nine. Great. We're going to finish this up and it's going to be a great trilogy and I have no worries whatsoever with any of it. But <laughs> that's kind of where I, I feel, except for people freaking out about the second writer that's on episode nine, who is Chris uh, Torrio, who wrote Batman versus Superman. Well, yeah. Okay. So I tweeted about this. He was called in to punch up a script that was already written yeah. by, I can't remember his name now, somebody else. But that guy originally, the original writer for that script, mm. that's all the of bulk, this story. The bulk of it is his. Is his. Yeah. And then this guy was called in to fix issues with it. So what we saw was the fixed <clears throat> version of Batman versus oh. Superman. Oh. I can't imagine but what was before Chris that. Chris also wrote Argo, which I don't know if you've seen Argo. Yes. Was, Argo is fantastic. Very good. Argo yeah. is really, really good. He wrote the screenplay for Argo. And so, I mean, the guy who wrote Monster Trucks? <laughs> Or a guy who wrote Argo and tried to help out Batman as versus <laughs> Superman. 
Yeah, I think the choice is clear here. So it's monster trucks. Well, huh? So, <laughs> well, uh, I don't know about that. Depends on what kind of movie you want. Okay, so JJ, since Force Awakens, has been credited with producer on 10 Cloverfield Lane, which mm-hmm. makes sense. Um, bunch of TV stuff, person of interest, moonshot, bunch of junk. <laughs> producer on Star Trek Beyond, makes sense. TV mm-hmm. stuff, blah, blah, blah. Executive producer on Westworld, which I didn't know. That's interesting. Hmm. I wonder why, what he did on that. Money. Um, okay, so... According to IMDb, I don't know anything about this, but producer for a Portal movie that's been yeah, announced? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's been in talks for a very long time. And producer on a Half-Life movie. Both of those have been in discussion, supposedly, for a, <laughs> like for like years and years. It's, okay, so maybe those are just floating out there then. Very, yeah. It's, he's credited They keep producers. getting brought back up, and nothing happens with them, okay. but they're supposedly going to happen. I mean, that's but. crazy. But so this is he produces a lot of stuff. I guess there's no, there's no year, and I am only looking at producer credits. <laughs> yeah. Um, but um, then there's the Last Jedi coming up. There's the Cloverfield movie, which is in post production. Yeah, whatever the new Cloverfield this, yeah, is. Yeah, this mysterious sequel to Ten yeah. Cloverfield Lane. At least we know it's coming this time. The next one in the universe. Yeah. Um, Mission Impossible Six, which mm-hmm. is filming right now. Um, and then episode nine pre in pre-production obviously right now. Yeah. But that's and, crazy. He's, he's done so much. His only writing credit, um, has been force awakens in episode nine, you know, and there's a bunch of stuff before that, but nothing since force awakens. Yeah. But yeah, he's been doing a ton of, he stays producing. very busy. He's all over no directing place. in between also. So I guess, all these producer credits are just him popping in, giving his opinion on junk. Funding. Funding? I don't know. Maybe. I know with, because he's credited as an executive producer on The Last Jedi, and that yeah. was just his, like his opinion, his script outline or whatever he had for The Last Jedi. Nothing yeah. really beyond that. Not like his production company or anything, like Bad Robot's not a part of it or anything right. like that. Right. Unlo- like it will be for uh, Nine. Right. Which, yeah, I, again, I have absolutely no problem with JJ doing it. I welcome him and I am excited about episode nine. Mm -hmm. And if you have not, if you worry about the writer that worked on Batman versus Superman and have not seen Argo, watch Argo because it's a really, really good movie. It was Chris Terrio, right? That was his name? Yep. Well, guess what we're about to do? Mm. IMDb. Diving in, guys. Michael's making us do oh, this. Oh, here we go. I have to be screenplay by Chris Terrio for Justice League. Yeah. So he's working on Justice League and, of course, after having done Batman versus Superman, whatever he did on that. Uh, screenplay for Justice League Part 2. Uh, writing credit on Batman versus Superman. Uh, a few director credits, blah, blah, blah. Not much else. So that's really it. Argo, Batman versus Superman, and then the Justice League movies. Yeah. And now episode nine. But unlike the guy who wrote Monster Trucks, having Colin Trevorrow to fall on, this guy has J.J. Abrams to fall on, which I, I trust <laughs> a little more with his writing career. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah. So don't worry. J.J.'s got this, guys. Wink. <laughs> uh, but episode nine has also inevitably had its date pushed. To December instead of May, which I always thought was that was going to happen at some point. Even, even if they didn't, have, even if they didn't have any director troubles, really? uh, like it, they've all been pushed to December. Every saga film has been pushed to December when it was supposed to be May, right? Han was announced as December, right? The Han Solo movie, or was that announced in the summer? I think it should be December, but it's not. It, it's still in the summer. It's still May. Of they next said year? they're keeping May. They said they're keeping the May release date. After all that junk, really? That's what they said. They said it is still the plan is for it still to release in May. And that was the crazy thing, is they were gonna have So next year, 2018, they were going to have, you know, um Han come out in the summer, right? Yeah. Right. I'm trying to find the release date. So so we were gonna have like six months between we're still going to have six months between yeah. Star Wars films. Right. And then we were going to have a year until episode nine, but now we're going to have a year and a half. And a half, yeah. 
which I, I still think Han should be in December to give like all of the movies time to breathe. But doesn't this feel like more of a summer blockbuster kind of movie though? The saga films? No, the, not just the saga films, but this film in particular. Episode nine? No, I'm talking Han Solo. Oh, Han Solo. It feels like just maybe the tone of it feels more like a like Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah, like a more upbeat. <laughs> <laughs> like I keep alluding to like what Chris and Phil were trying to do. Yeah, I, I guess. Yeah, I guess I've like, accepted that now it's that it really is Star Wars Guardians. <laughs> yeah, May twenty fifth, two thousand eighteen. Is this? Yeah. It's still. They, yeah, that they, I mean, that was a big thing. People were like, are, "Are you still doing it?" And they kept saying, "Yes, it's still slated for May." And you know, Ron Howard's and been in the middle. Uh, he like jumped in and the middle of this been, for a while now. Chuck trucking along. He still tweets pictures of them working on stuff. Yeah. So and it's still May, supposedly May, happening May twenty fifth. I I don't like having a year and a half between Star Wars. A year is good. Six months is not enough time between Star Wars. Yeah. <laughs> the amount of merchandise overlap going from episode eight to Han Solo. There's no Force Friday for this one. If they keep Force Friday in September, which it has been, that was the last one anyway. There's no Han holidays. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> is that hmm. call me the Lucasfilm <laughs> and Disney? I've Han got, I've got this. Hatter day. <laughs> yeah. Sure. I, I that's all I got. I don't know. <clears throat> so I I yeah, I the breathing space between Han and episode eight, I don't like. I still think that should have been moved to December. Not not just because of the troubles with directors, but I think it should have been done. Just to breathe between the two Give movies. A year between their their films in this in the Star Wars series, I think, should be Yeah. That's I don't want it all jammed together and it should be like <laughs> all Star Wars all the time and then it's I don't know. Rushing I don't like the idea of them rushing Star Wars movies out. Which is what it feels like. I know they're not, but it feels very rushed and not like giving you time to enjoy the one before it. Right. So I don't, I don't want to watch episode. I don't want to watch the last Jedi. And then, you know, like a month later, it's like, we all forgot about it because here's all the Han merchandise and signs and pictures and trailer and ha. And just <laughs> done like, Oh, well, I guess, I guess the last Jedi happened for a month and now it's gone. <laughs> all right. So yeah. I don't know what I was thinking. I was saying Force Awakens was in pre-production in 2015. It came out in 2015. So. Yeah, so 14. Right. Well, probably well, 13. They were further. like... The moment, the when moment the, Star Wars was... Lucasfilm was purchased. When was that? Was that 2014? What? 2012. The purchase? Okay. 12, yeah. 12. So 13, probably, yeah, right? Yeah, like pre, pre, like planning for and they the were, trilogy. Yeah, I'm sure with that sale, they were. That was one of the big things. Was yes, let's release new movies. It was only, yeah. geez, five years ago. It's not been that long. That's crazy. Nope. So yeah, year and a half from Han Solo to Episode Nine. So lots of time for nothing to happen. So Last Jedi related. will be in theaters for what? Probably two, three months. Depending so on February. depending on his legs, yeah. February at least, end of February. Then three more months, another Star Wars movie comes out. Yeah, that's just that seems crazy. Yeah, I remember I was still going to Force Awakens showings in well, mid. That stayed in that that stayed in theaters for a long time though, just because of how lucrative it was. I think Last Jedi will be the same. I don't maybe think... maybe not quite as crazy. No, but... just because of the timing of the Force Awakens and it being the first Star Wars movie, I don't. I think it in will a while, be a while yeah. before anything breaks that seal. Maybe if that happens. So you don't think Last Jedi will beat <clears throat> Force Awakens numbers? Box office o- numbers? opening weekend? No. Total box office? No. I don't. I, Not total. I could. Yeah, I could see that. The total is insane. And the opening weekend is because, like, it was the first Star Wars movie, so, like, everyone rushed out to see it. I don't see that happening. You don't think so? With The Last Jedi. It made two billion. Yes, worldwide, yeah, two billion. Which is insane. Jeez, 2.06 billion. Yeah, it's definitely not going to beat that, but... Opening weekend, I just think so many people rushed out to see the first new Star Wars movie, the opening weekend. You don't I think don't that's going to happen that'll again? happen with The Last Jedi. I think there were enough people that were pissed off and other, enough people who were just like, yeah, yeah, it's another one of those again. Like, I'll go see it <laughs> when I get to it type of thing. 
But I think the fact that it was the first Star Wars movie in forever that like everyone, even people that didn't care, went to go see it. That's probably true. Yeah. And so now you've got like, yeah, I'm a Star Wars fan now. I'll go see it. Or yeah, in the new Star Wars movie, I'll go check it out. But not, not like how much it was sold out. Yeah. Uh, as soon as the last you know, the Force Awakens came out. Jeez. Single weekend gross was five hundred and twenty nine yeah. million dollars. Yes. Good lord. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I could see, I could see a billion in twelve days. Yes. I never went back and looked a billion at billion dollars. Yeah, it, it it was insane. Yeah, there's the, there's the, no the, way this the, is gonna the ramp on that is just a wall. Like there's not a ramp up to that number. Like it just like shot directly straight up yeah. to all of the money. Yeah, there's no way that this is gonna no. there wow, it's gonna bad. be a long time before anything touches that that mm-hmm. opening weekend or even I mean the two billion is one thing, but the opening weekend is yeah, that's that's a hard one to beat. Did it beat Titanic? Overall? Yeah. Um No, it didn't. Not Titanic. Titanic no. is two point five billion. Yeah. No. All right. Well wait, hold on. This is a different number. Mm. Highest grossing films adjusted for inflation, yeah. according to Wikipedia. Star Wars. Well it just says Star Wars. Well, regular. That's that's the uh, that's the first, yeah. First or that's no, Force episode, Awakens episode four. No, Force feed. Awakens. All right, yeah, just numbers were all weird. <laughs> Force Awakens is third. Titanic is two point one billion. Yeah. And then, so just slightly, and Avatar and is two point seven. Yeah, Titanic and Avatar. Why is Avatar two. so high? People, why, uh, is that why there's a park? Dedicated to Avatar because, because it's, there's so much money. Yeah. yeah, you didn't know Avatar did that well. No. Yeah, it just it beat Titanic. It yeah. was awful. Yes, it was. But everyone else in the world except for us apparently agreed that it was amazing. Everyone I knew that saw Avatar loved it and said it was the best movie ever. And I saw it once and was like, "This is it's shitty just space a, Pocahontas." Yeah, it's just another. It's just another shitty it's, CGI movie. Well, it, it's. I mean, obviously, almost all stories have been told already, but it was like it's basically space Pocahontas with aliens and the hair sex, ponytail banging. Okay, so talking about the park, I went at Disney. I went recently for the first time. Okay, I still haven't gone. That's here in Orlando. Um, Yeah, at uh, Hollywood Studios at Disney or at uh, Animal Kingdom Kingdom. at Disney World in Orlando, there is an Avatar Land. Yeah. A whole section of this park that was dedicated to Avatar. Yeah. So walking in, you we it, we went at night, which is supposedly the best time to go because there's all kinds of crazy lighting and there's music, okay. like live music and stuff that happens, but whatever. So you walk in and the ambiance for the park starts to change a little bit and you hear like different sounds kind of getting louder and like, you know, background noises like okay. bugs and... Things like that. So, I mean, that was kind of cool. You you walk across this, at least the way we went, you walk across this really long bridge mm-hmm. and you start to hear all that and you start to see some weird plants, you know, pop up here and there. So like the transition into the world was really cool. But once you get there and you get over all the cool lighting and cause there is, it's like, it's a lot of black oh, lit. It's, it's Disney. It's yeah. It's, it's done very well. Right. And you do feel once you're in there, you do feel very um, uh, immersed. Yeah, yeah. In whatever you're in. <laughs> yeah. The, again, like, what, you can't like anything argue else at Disney. Right. You can't argue that it feels like you. You know, you're in a different place, which is yeah, it's cool. But once you get over all that, and once you get over all the lighting and weird stuff that they have going on, you're just like, okay, so it's a. It's okay. There's a thing. There's a weird looking flower. There's a tree that is upside down. There's, it's just like, it's stuff. not the most interesting world. It's, yeah. there's nothing to be interested in. Well, there's it's a just ride. Like, or oh, two. that's a, there's a thing. I mean, there's some rides. Yeah, a few. But, but again, it's but just the like, world of Avatar is not an, the world itself is not an interesting one. Right. Unlike Star Wars, where it's like a cantina and an alien and just a, a thing on the wall and buildings and stuff. But this is just like uh, Space Woods. It's like, yeah, I don't know. Maybe it's different for other people. Maybe this it's is like what, if you had a park section that was just the forest on indoor without the Ewoks, like tree houses. It's just the forest. Like I that. would say even <laughs> if it was that, but even with the Ewoks, like with the but tree that top, was, but that was top walkways and stuff like that. But just indoor. But just that, like yeah, nothing. nothing else. <laughs> yeah. 
And you're like, okay, that's a thing. Great. Why is this? Why is this exciting? I, it, it was so weird. I never understood Avatar. Maybe this I is what people think about <clears throat> Star Wars. Star Wars? Yeah. Shame. People, <laughs> people that don't care. How dare they? Like, okay, that's a thing. This that's how you don't care. Like, this, is how, this is how people who don't care about a franchise feel. I guess. That's the thing, though. Avatar isn't even a franchise. It was one movie. He's trying to do another four at one time, but he can't stop going on sea dives <laughs> to look at algae. Can't get out of the damn ocean long enough to make a movie. Well, <laughs> it sounds like we're joking, but we're not. It's real. Because <laughs> all he does is go on deep sea dives. <clears throat> sequels he wants planned, to make another four all at once. But Sequels planned for 2020. 2020 is three years from now. Which has already been, what, four years since the movie came out? Yeah. It came out in in 2009. Shit. It's so been it's been way more six than four years. years. God. Six years. 2020, 2022, and 2023. Wait, hold on. Avatar 2 was scheduled for 2018, and then it was delayed. The original dates for the sequels were 2020, 2022, 2023. No, no, no. They've been delayed like five times since then. Now, the sequels are scheduled for 2021, 2020, 21, 24, and 25. <laughs> That's almost 10 years from now. The last one's going to come out like 20 years after the original one came out. What the heck? Well, because he wants to write them all and, and shoot them all at one time. There are going to be kids that are born before... Like after the first movie came out and not even know what this is when the last sequel comes out. It's going to be like Alien, but the guy, but like he's been actually trying to write all the other Alien movies up to the one that just came out. <laughs> right. And it just never happening. All at once. <laughs> yeah. It's like he didn't do anything else since Alien 1 and then tried to do 2, 3 and, <laughs> and Alien was Resurrection. What, the latest one? Covenant? No, no. The old what? ones. Oh, whatever the last it's one. It's like if that came remember. out and then like 20 years later, the rest of them all <laughs> just dumped out like right. all of a sudden because he decided to finally make them. <laughs> Doesn't make any sense. I mean, good Lord. Yeah. What, uh, there's there's our new section, uh, Hating Avatar. 16 years between the first one and, and, yeah. and this last one, which is fine. I mean, there's been tons of time in between Star Wars movies, but you're talking about <laughs> writing... All the other movies of the franchise all at once. And, then, and, and shooting then, them all at once is what uh, he wants to do. I just don't get it. I never, no, I never understood Avatar and I won't, but I'm sure there's people that feel that way about Star Wars and they, they suck. You, <laughs> I don't understand how you could feel the same way. I mean, maybe, maybe because there are people Star Wars that feel has been that way, fleshed but... out and Avatar is like space world unobtainium. What the aliens <laughs> hair banging go. That's what the park feels like too. It's just like <laughs> weird plants. And They're just like people that run up to you. Have you seen unobtainium? <laughs> and then they run off. Is that he named it unobtainium? A yeah. guy who wrote a movie who went, this went through other writers and people and uh, approval processes. And the term <laughs> unobtainium was approved, shot, went through editing and was released into a theater as an appropriate space word for a metal. Unobtainium. Because it's hard to get. Do you get it? That's <sighs> <laughs> <laughs> so bad. Just as a person who enjoys film, that hurts me. You can't, you can't name something that dumb and try to make a real movie. <sighs> it's probably oh, no. the loudest I've ever been on this podcast. <laughs> it's because of Avatar. <laughs> the word unobtainium derives humorously from unattainable. No. <laughs> with what? With the suffix eum. <laughs> really? I had no idea. It's hard to get. So they, oh, unob they can't obtain it. Wow. It's like Who the, the fuck that shit? It's like the writer on Gentleman Broncos, <laughs> the Jermaine Clement guy. <laughs> Or he's talking about how to name your characters. <laughs> yes. You put no those shocking. suffixes on the end. <laughs> uh, yep. So Avatar World, Disney, Animal Kingdom. Go go see a space plant and ride a ride and watch some Navi bang you with their hair. Mm. It'll happen. Mm. 
All right, I think we spent more time on Avatar than we did about JJ's <laughs> directing episode nine. All right, so Last Jedi. Uh, we've talked about all the good guys from the the light side of the Force to Finn and Rose and Poe and all those people. And we haven't yet talked about the First Order and the evil ones, mm-hmm. the villains. So let's talk about those. Praetorian guards. Yes, they are. You do. Are, have you come around to liking their armor yet? Mm-mm. You still don't like it. There's the one. I'm trying to remember which one. The one format or the one uh, variant, I guess. Uh, that one. No, not not oh, the dude you have. Not the one he with looks, the skirt. He looks like a terrible monk. <laughs> He's just wearing a plate on his head. I have a plate that's shaped exactly like a that plate? at home. A plate, like a dinner plate. <laughs> it looks like he's just wearing one of my dinner plates on his head. You're a no. horrible person. No, well, not I'm that sorry. guy. It's the guy that um The guy you have is the two Yeah, with the two knives. Two knives that yeah, connect yeah. to one staff. Okay. Well then it's the guy with like the spear thing, I think. The really long like halberd? Yeah. Okay. Uh I think that's the guy. Like the the wait. Just talk off my <laughs> fine. Well, I'm sorry you don't like them. I still think they look really freaking cool. So um, Ryan Johnson was saying how the Emperor's guards are very formal and you you know, you know got the sense that they could fight, but you never really got to see anything about that. Right. And they kept, really just looked ceremonial more than anything and you know there was never any actions. Yeah. And him, he was saying the Praetorians in his brief um, to the costume designer, Michael Kaplan, is that these guys have to be more like samurai. So he specifically went for samurai look, which is kind of what we were discussing before in that they really do have that samurai vibe about them. It's the um, guy with the, um, he's got like, yeah, the staff thing. It's like the Kuriki. Yeah. Kirky, whatever, how you pronounce that with the, but with the long staff end on it. Yeah. Where he doesn't have the giant dinner plate on his head and it's just like a rounded, uh, more of a sculpted helmet. Like, yeah. The black, the black series Praetorian, the, like the black series six inch one that was released. That, is that, that the guy. black series one? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Him, that guy. Where he's got the long staff. It's more of a rounded, sculpted helmet. Fine. It's more clean. He's not wearing a freaking dinner plate. <laughs> well, Ryan said that, you know, he said I, they have I to be... I don't like how they're all red. All, all red? All red with no <laughs> the, lines. The, the Emperor's or, Guards were, and they looked super cool. But the Emperor's Guards had... Um, Helmets and robe. They had the black visor that kind of separated the I red guess. from the rest of that. I know. I think it makes them look even creepier because there's like no... It's just like just armor. It like makes them look cheap. No. Like even the real costumes look like plastic. They probably are. It's probably <laughs> a kind of plastic. Well, you're not supposed to know that. <laughs> oh, okay. Ryan Johnson said they had to be built to move and you know, you have to believe that they could step forward and engage if they have to, and they have to look dangerous, which I think totally comes across. Michael thinks they look like dinner wear. <laughs> they so, do. Whatever. Well um apparently the name Praetorian comes from it's uh, a Roman. history. Yeah, it's a Roman from guard. the the uh, the guards that protected uh, ancient Roman emperors. Yeah, which is cool, especially since he's you know Snoke kind of comes across as very not the emperor kind of emperor, but very like human he does history kind of come across human as history like a... emperor, gold robes and like his throne and yeah, I don't know, very you know roman emperor i like, guess he does kind of come across as like a yeah an emperor like a fancy emperor, emperor not an evil emperor like the the emperor right a emperor not the emperor that's interesting i never thought of it that way before um and then johnson says you know that they are his per they are snoke's personal guards yeah and they stick with snoke they stick with snoke so uh so essentially bodyguards essentially bodyguards if he needs bodyguards hmm Okay, so that leads into Snoke, which now that we're well, on that topic, yes. what were you going to say? Uh, go ahead. What, now that we're on that topic, do you think, oh, we've talked about this before so much. We've talked about all this First Order junk. Yes. So much. Yes. But in the way that Vader and the Emperor were, um, like they could kind of take care of stuff on their own. Like mm. they had a power that kind of compelled people to follow them out of fear, I guess. Yeah. 
it seems like Snoke, while like he has this knowledge of the Force, like we've talked about before, mm-hmm. it seems like that's not the thing that compels people to follow him. Like there's something else. Like his knowledge. Well, I mean, we talked about first. We talked or, about last episode how the training of the First Order troops was very much like Nazi, like Nazi propaganda, really. And how they were brought up, they were like trained as yeah. children. Be like, you know, we're doing this for the good of the ga- for the galaxy, and yes. uh, you know, we're going to bring, you know, we're going to bring the the rebels only bring or the New Republic only brings war and fighting, and we're going to stop all that and rule everyone, and everyone will be happy when we do it. But do you think that really comes from Snoke, or do you think that comes from just the motivation for the First Order itself? Because all the like, if you look at mm-hmm. Bloodline how yep. that kind of came about all those senators and stuff. They all I still think the first order happened. Well, I mean, the emperor was working on things for so long and had this plan that came to fruition over all these little things. Yeah. So it, the first order could have very well been the case, but I think the first order is really just a front for whatever's actually happening. What do you mean? Like there's some, well, I've talked, I mean, we've talked before my theory of, I don't think Snoke is the one who's actually in charge. Okay, right. I think there is something else or something darker at work than just Snoke. You think so? And I think the First Order, if it did come up without their doing, which they could have, Snoke and whoever else could have nudged this into being and like came into it as like, oh, well, let me help you. But like, but really, if known what was happening, I don't, it, whether they had a nudge or not, I think the First Order was a good jumping in point for them to whatever they were doing. So you think they found these the First Order? So either the First Order started because of all these people who wanted the Empire to come back, which yeah. in, in Bloodlines we get that. Right. But that could have also been nudged into happening by Snoke and whoever else. Hmm. I think the First Order was built... Like finance as, or just led? Because I don't think Snoke... I don't see Snoke as... I mean, he's Supreme Leader Snoke for the First Order. And as the ultimate bad guy, Right. Is that what you're I don't think he's the ultimate bad guy, but yeah. I also don't think like the emperor wanted to rule everything. He wanted to, he even wanted to leave the galaxy probably to find other places to conquer. Like he wanted to just stay in, in rule, if sure. you will. Okay. I don't think that's, I don't think that's the game now. I think the first no. order, the yeah. first order as the order wants to restore, you know, they, they're, they're very much, I think they've been groomed to be the empire and have that view like Hux does of like, you know, we're going to destroy the, you know, the, the new Republic and we're the first order and screaming Hitler speeches. <laughs> and I think they all truly believe that, but I think Snoke is using that for his purpose. For some other agenda. I don't think Snoke wants to rule the galaxy hmm. like the emperor or whoever else. I don't think it's, I think it's very much for like there's something with the force and Luke and yeah. Jedi and the force that this is all, the first order is just a, a front or a means to their end. But I can see cause even, even in with Kylo Ren and Snoke, like the fact that they destroyed all those new Republic planets, I, it all, it always came across to me. Like that was all Hux and yes. everyone else. And like that Snoke was like, right. shoot, fine. Go do it. Right. We've talked about that before. Kylo, like it, go find Luke. Like, right. that's why we're actually, that's exactly. what Snoke actually wants. Like, there was never, that was never a, um, that was never Snoke's agenda in the first yes. place to, yeah, like you're saying, to go after the New Republic and to restore order to the galaxy. So but Hux's Hitler speech on probably Ilum, if, I mean, that's what we're, we assume that planet is. I don't think it's been. No, that was a Starkiller base. Yes, but the, the assumption is the assumption is still that Starkiller base was Ilum oh, okay. at one point. Yeah, uh, maybe. Which, if there were, which they had the crystals there, and I think again, I think there was a reason that Starkiller base may have been Ilum for Snoke's reasons. Maybe Being I, the I, crystals. Maybe we'll find that out. The Kyber crystals in and the, stuff. The new EU. Yes. But yeah, I mean, you know, Hux was the very the front man on all of that, all of that, like destroying the Republic and being right. the first order and restoring their type of peace, if you will, restoring yeah. order yeah. because right. they're the first order, getting but, rid of terrorists and corrupt yes. government and all that. And junk. that was all Hux, whereas Snoke well, was Hux telling and, and all the senators and stuff. Yeah, that but then Snoke the is. I think Snoke is the money. 
I mean, Snoke is funding them to do their thing so he can do what he's trying to do. And you have Kylo try to find Luke because he's trying to find Luke because his boss is doing whatever. I don't think he's the money. I I think he, there's some other, that's what I was getting at before. Or he's meant to come across that way. Well, that's what I was getting at before is he's got, in the way that um, the Emperor and Vader's like powers and Mm -hmm. and fear that they had over people like that was their connection to the empire. Obviously that Palpatine started all that. Um, but you know, he had a a real thing that he could offer a way that he could lead the empire and the way that he controlled people with fear like that. Um, just because of how powerful he was. Snoke has something like that and it's not, I don't think it's money. I don't think it's, it's not the same. I don't kinda, think, but I also don't think Hux cares as long as Snoke is helping him and his. Sure. Yeah. His I agree group with that. grow to their, their means. I agree with that, but there's this thing and I'm trying to figure out what it is. It's not, it's not money. It's not power. Um, maybe like you're saying, maybe we're being led to believe it is possibly like he's, he's putting himself off as, or he's making himself look like, with the robes and the, stuff. You know, the financier is. for the First Order. Yeah. With the gold robes and, and whatnot. But there's something else, and I don't know. I can't put my finger on it. Even, Whether it's... Because, you know, even Hux is going into that, like, throne room to talk to the hologram and yeah. and all of that, and he's still kind of pissy. Hux? With, yeah, Hux is kind of pissy to Snoke and, like, complaining about Kylo, and Kylo is very reverent and almost, like, afraid, it seems, of, of Snoke. But Hux... Snoke Hux was his teacher. I can But Hux that. does not have that. Yes. He does not f- seem to fear Snoke. Right. So I, I think they are more. So what is that connection? That it's almost Snoke? like the, it's almost like the, the relationship between Vader and Tarkin where Tarkin could have given a shit about Vader, but he knew Vader was in charge yeah, he to was help him it. do what he was doing. He knew he was useful. And yeah. I don't think Hux is as smart as Tarkin by any means. Um, I guess we'll his see. His father was a dumbass, but. I don't really know. But, uh, you know, him, maybe. Oh, Hux. I thought you said Snoke. <laughs> no, no, Hux. I don't think Hux no, is as no, smart no, as Tarkin no. by any means. But yeah. I think he knows, like, okay, you're the guy in charge and you're going to help. You're the one that's helping me build my first order to do sure. my bidding and, right, and right. do whatever. And he Snoke, knows how to Snoke use just people. seems to, like, yeah, do that so everyone else is distracted while I'm doing this thing I'm actually trying to get done. Yeah. Which seems to be force related. Luke and whatever. Yeah, that else. seems to be the primary. Um, motivation for Snoke is and I mean Snoke could force. be the ultimate bad guy who is still putting off this front of being fancy man, you know, fancy pants on the <laughs> big ass starship. But I don't know. I still like the idea of like even he is doing this nefar- like doing this for some greater nefarious means that's not just Snoke. Say that again. So that, that that there's something there's something more evil at 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 work than just Snoke trying to oh, hunt down Luke and end the Jedi, if you will. I, yeah, there's maybe. A, I think there is a purpose to it, darker than just Snoke, like, like the Emperor trying to just rule yeah. everything. I don't think he's just trying to kill Luke for there to be no more Jedi or for anyone else to anyone else to be in the Force. Right? You think it's I think more there's a greater that. Force reason that he's doing this. That yeah. either there's someone else that's having him do this. Yeah. Or there's something at work that's not just Snoke doing this to be the last last person with the Force, and I'm in charge. Right. Because he doesn't seem to be looking for the power. He seems to be looking to do something with ending the Jedi or with the Force specifically. Right. Right. Which and I don't. He, I can't. I can't think of anything. That's like, yeah, what, what that would what, be. Well, what's the motivation for that? Yeah, that's that's what I'm trying to figure. And I out. love that. I love that. <laughs> like, it's I completely open ended. Yeah, like, that? like Snoke does not seem right now. His motivation is to find Luke, but we don't know why. Yeah, what that motivation is, and to what, like, what the ends, like, what the ends to that is, like, yeah. why? And, and maybe, maybe I don't know. Maybe the answer has something to do with the history with Luke's Academy or whatever that we're going to yeah. find out in Last Jedi. Or yeah, maybe we don't know yet. It's again, they, I can't figure out what that connection is. What's What's tying Snoke? What does Snoke have to offer the First Order that would have them, other than um, him helping them build their collaborating numbers. for better, you know, lack of a better word, like yeah. this? Um, yeah, because I completely agree with what you're saying. I don't, I don't think he's, um, yeah, I don't, I don't think he, he he's as powerful or as rich or whatever he's as he's making himself out to be. Yeah, it doesn't seem that way. 
Yeah, and so, I, I mean, I hope we find out more about that. Yeah, and even Ryan Johnson was saying, you know, similar to Ray's parentage, Snoke is here to serve a function in the story. Um, so, like in the original trilogy, we didn't know anything about the Emperor, and then in the prequels, we knew everything about him uh, because that was his rise to power, and that was the story. But in the Last Jedi, he said we will learn exactly as much about Snoke as we need to. We will see more of him, and Andy Serkis will will do that as it's it's an entirely motion capture performance. Yeah. Um. And. You know, that circus delivers a satisfying menace when we get to see him up close. And hmm. he said, I'd be sitting at the monitor, monitor just with my eyes as big as dinner plates. It's one of those performances where after every line, I'd look over at whoever's standing next to me with an expression on my face like, oh, my God, <laughs> we just got that. Nice. Which that feels like anything that Andy Circus does. Yeah. Is true. brilliant. Yeah. Because he's so good at what he does. Right. But yeah, him saying, you know, we'll get as much, we'll get... We will get as much of, of Snoke as we need to serve the story. The, yeah, to serve the story. So I'm wondering what what that is. How, how much of the story even involves Snoke in the first place? Yeah, how much of the story is the history of the First Order or what mm-hmm. they're trying to accomplish? Yeah. Because I, I still think it would be a great red herring for Snoke to not be the ultimate the, dude. The bad guy or the evil one that we think he is. He, I mean, he yeah. supposedly seduced Ben and all that, so I'm sure... He could be just like, you know, Yoop Tashu, you know, a dark advisor, but more force powerful than Yoop was because he was just a right. follower, if you will. But he could just right. be a dark advisor and teacher to whatever is else. Yeah. Uh, and I don't know what that would be, but I think it would be really cool for it to be that even darker, like more nefarious evil purpose behind all of this. And then the First Order really has nothing. They're just the front for this these backdoor force dealings. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I, I hope we find out more about at least what the First Order's plans are. Yeah. Well, no, because I feel like we know that already. I think... I guess specifically... Snow I really Point. don't think we need much more of the First Order from what we've gotten from The Force Awakens. I want more of the origins of the First Order. Yeah. But like what they're doing now, I think I could care less about because I don't think that is what the purpose is. They already destroyed the New Republic. Like that's gone. Yeah. So uh, th- I think their only purpose will be for to be defeated by whoever's left over, by the Resistance. Yeah. To stop them from taking over. I mean, that's their purpose now is just to be stopped. But mm-hmm. there's something more evil and Force-related happening aside from that story. Yeah, yeah. And of course, Snoke is on his mega ship and all of that, and that's going to tie in with trying to destroy him and you know destroying the First Order is probably hand in hand. Yeah, but yeah, like I feel like we know just as much as the Resistance knows right now about Snoke. Maybe, maybe a little bit more. Yeah, because I mean, like, like maybe, Leia said, she you know, like she you know, Snoke seduced him to the seduce, so like how much did they know of Snoke? He was around. Yeah, who he was, he was around and to seduce where Ben, he came from right? And... So he was around to seduce Ben. So who who was he? What did he do? Why yeah. was he around? Right. And has he always looked like that? <laughs> I, I don't. Yeah. So who wants that around? Ugh. He has weird ostomy in his swirly face, throat, and like open cheeks, like two face. <laughs> it looks like he was just a bunch of. <clears throat> like flappy skin and you just gave him a swirly in a toilet and it just kind of all tangled together. You melt silly putty and then stick it in the toilet and, and then flush you it. Just stuck some eyes. Out. <laughs> <laughs> Great. <laughs> Supreme leader. Um, in relation to, in relation to Snoke, cause side relation, there is a really good and thoroughly thought out, um, like theory on the plot of star Wars that was posted to Reddit recently on the star Wars subreddit. Uh, I don't know if I sent it to you, but, this guy has like his whole rundown, like update, like Mark two of his theory from since from all the information we've gotten so far from the last Jedi plot of a, the, the new movies. Like he's, he's got like quotes from books with page numbers and titles and like, it's <laughs> all very well put together. <laughs> and I may disagree with some of it. Like he, he is very firm belief that Ray is Luke's daughter. Uh, but he, he, he explains it very well as to why he thinks that. Yeah. Um, I disagree with that as well. I don't, I don't think that's the case. I do, but his explanation lets me, leads me to believe that it could very well have happened. 
that way. It's a good explanation. Sure. But Darth Jar Jar was also a good explanation. No, it wasn't. You can't. It was. It really was. If you watch the video, (laughs) he had a lot of references and a bunch of, it was very well thought out. I still don't think Ray is Luke's But it was awful. It very well could be. So there's some stuff like that I I don't agree with. But talking about Snoke and about the Emperor's plans and why he was leaving the galaxy because he failed here. He was going to look for somewhere else to conquer, essentially, and gain power. Mm. And there there was some... There I was some good stuff in there, um, okay. so I do suggest reading that. But yeah, stuff with with Snoke, with um, with the the Academy, and and this being Luke's actual daughter. Yeah. Um, that just in relation to Snoke and like Snoke trying to kidnap her because it was Luke's daughter for various reasons, and and because of things that have happened, like Kylo saying "what girl" and Snoke being seemingly upset about this girl, and then. Of course, Luke gives her that look at the end of the movie, which could mean anything like, shit, there's a person on my island. <laughs> um, but <clears throat> I don't know. It it was very interesting and just thought out of like some of Snoke's plans with trying to get to Luke. So if you go to the Star Wars subreddit and look for it, there's like Star Wars Theory Mark II. Uh, was, there's some interesting stuff. <clears throat> I'll try to I'll try to post it somewhere. I think that's Twitter. the that's I don't know. That's too easy. What Luke? What do you mean? Luke's what, daughter is what too easy? Are you about to complain about her being Luke's daughter? Well, not that specifically, but just these kind of theories. Right now, like the the whole story, I'm just I'm not convinced that they have it all figured out yet. I think they, as in the writers of the movies, the story group, I guess you could say. <laughs> I think at this point they do, because they had a, they had a they had a working script. For, okay, well, for nine. Yeah. Okay. So now. Yeah, maybe. Maybe they have an idea or at least an outline. They at least know where the full story was going. They obviously had to fix stuff from Gary yes. dying and stuff like that. But I think they know where the story's, what the end game is. But I guess <clears throat> that wasn't figured out until episode nine was being written. Started. Yeah, so you could go back to The Force Awakens Possibly. and all those novels and stuff that came out around then. I don't think there was an end game in mind when all that stuff was written. You know, I think when Snoke is, was created, there wasn't. Yeah, well, we've yeah. and we've said that before. I think both of us agree on that. Um, but I, I think, and I think that's why a lot of this. I think post, by the time they finished writing eight, they knew where nine ended. Uh, maybe. <clears throat> Obviously, how they would get there through nine was a different story. But I think they had the rest of the story by then. I but would I think. think they, quote unquote, was really just Colin because I think they were leaving that up to him. To kind of I can't that. imagine they would leave the entire through <laughs> the line, fate of the, the entire through trilogy. line of the new Star Wars trilogy to Up just to the Colin writers, Trevolo. just to the director writers of the new trilogy. Yeah, maybe. I think the story group had like a like here are the beats we want to hit. Here's kind of where we want to see this go for the future of Star Wars as possibly making more movies after this. Possibly, <clears throat> but I think you and could say at least when they started this, I no, I'm yeah. not convinced Episode that seven, they that had the end game in mind. Yeah. I think they had a loose they had loose directions going into eight, but I think by the time they finished writing eight, they knew where everything was going. Maybe, maybe, yeah. Now, I I don't know about you know when Colin started working with the story group and what those meetings like what happened in those meetings. So yeah, it could have been around the end of eight. Obviously, nothing good. Right. <laughs> Apparently. Apparently, that didn't work out too well. What meetings? Who? JJ. Yeah. Yeah. So on to Kylo Ren. Uh, I'm going to sit back here now. So he's kind of been shit on by. He was a sanitation stormtrooper. Took a lightsaber. Kylo Ren. So a sanitation stormtrooper that is Finn picked up a lightsaber having, you know, touched one for a little while earlier and fended him off for a good while before getting sliced in the back. So Kylo's a shitty <laughs> lightsaber man. And then of course, Ray who overpowers him yet again with the force and well, yeah, he, he probably sees off. Ray the same way he sees Finn, which is just some, some nobody. Maybe. Well, I guess it maybe goes back to whether or not he knows what her. Girl? Yeah. Like I mean, who knows? But he was obviously um, not left in the best light of having two people that have never used a lightsaber like for any length of time 
<laughs> right. One guy not even being a force user, just like holding him off. And then this girl who doesn't know shit. Right. Um, okay. Well, handily out, you know, out forces him, if you will. I'll say this. Yes, he says what girl, <laughs> but they were both super surprised that she kind of fended him off during the interrogation. Yes. So if he really knew who she was and what she was capable of but before been, now. But, but he also thinks he's like the best shit that's ever happened to the dark side of the force. Because <laughs> he's a whiny teenager who's like, does. I can't die. But, I'm the best. I, you, you've never even been trained by Luke, you know, but, that type of thing. Okay, yeah, that's one thing Kylo thinks that way. But Snoke was also super surprised too. So yes, they because, were both. because she hasn't been trained at all. If If they even know who she is. She has no training or experience, probably, in the Force. But that's what I'm saying. It's if they knew she was and knew, you know, what girl, why would they be so concerned about this girl if they didn't already have some inkling on what she was capable of? Because why? Because shit, she's involved. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, that's. I don't know. I just, I. More reasons to not think that Ray is anybody. Yeah, I think. Anyway, that's all. I'll, I'll stop. <laughs> so even Ryan Johnson was saying how, you know, Ben Solo's shift to darkness is symbolic of the treacherous road through adolescence. And Kylo represents the rebellious anger you feel during that period. And, you know, that's what we saw as whiny teenager slashing at things with his lightsaber and yelling Why, and just whining all the time. Yeah. And, um, but he obviously does it in an extreme that's not healthy at all. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, know. you little bitch. <laughs> and then you know Ryan says how Kylo and Ray are the you know two halves of the dark, dark two halves of the dark and the light. And you know, so you've got guy learning how to be dark and girl learning how to force, in a, you know, in the light, if you will. Well, that's an interesting quote because that means. Okay, there's not a balance in them, but there's both sides of the force in them, in both of them. Well, like Kylo Kylo's is fighting, being torn between the two. Yes. Still. Which you could really see in Force Awakens. Yeah. And he's kind of pushed that, I mean, with killing Han. That. Spoiler alert. Yeah, that probably settled him fairly well into the <laughs> darkness. But then that also means awesome. on the other side that Rey has an element of the dark side that she's fighting against. Well, uh, aren't weren't they? All, aren't 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 we all? <laughs> I mean, Anakin. I mean, weren't we all? <laughs> I mean, Anakin. Obviously, that was a struggle at all times. And uh, who? Luke. I mean, there was there was a struggle with the darkness, yeah. and I mean that's y- yeah. That's again where we get back to the what we've talked about with the force, and this is one of the things that was also in that theory on on Reddit. But it's something that we've kept, kept talking about is is how through history, the Jedi probably misconstrued this lightness and the and the way of the force in such a way of repressing yourself, having no yes. emotion. Yeah, you you know you can't feel basically like you can't love, you can't hate, you can't like, you can't you know <laughs> like it's it's such this like super religious mentality of like repress everything and just be good. Yeah. Like th- th- look at a lot of religious leaders that, or th- the Catholic priests that there's like, <laughs> that was tried to be repress to one everything, extreme. but I still did all the kids, you know, or like, you know, the Westboro Baptist Oops. church was like, we're super religious, but we hate everything else. Like it's like with any religion that goes too far with, you know, just repress everything and just be holy. And that never works out great. You can't <laughs> repress all these feelings until they explode and you murder everyone because yeah. you all, you give everybody the Kool-Aid and then you know everyone dies in a field. Instead of just some of the Kool-Aid. <laughs> all of my Kool-Aid. <laughs> Take it. Take all of my Kool-Aid. Yeah. So um, it's okay. So here so we've had that conversation multiple times and this person mentioned it as well, which I think it's the force was never meant to end up the light side of the force was never meant to be that way. Yeah. There is that fighting of the darkness, but I think there is a way to use the darkness 
just like in life. Like, I mean, just the, <laughs> the darkness in my soul right now can be used for good, but not me murdering people in a gutter. Well, like, it like, yeah, it brings a balance to where you're not fully committed to, like you're saying, repressing all this other stuff. Yeah. You know, like it, it pulls you back. It pulls this extreme to the light mm-hmm. stuff back a little bit just yeah. by the fact that it exists. Instead of like you don't let it go extreme to the other side. Because there is the a dark, dark side to the force, and you can extrapolate from that being super evil and fear and hate and yeah, because it's all making about, kyber crystals bleed. To, right. I mean, to your will to make a lightsaber. Because like, it's all about anger and passion. You and, can suck that out of the force because there are those two halves of the force: the light and the dark. There's the daughter and the son from you know the Clone Wars, but right. then there was the father who was like the medium. The balance between the, the two. The balance yeah. between the force. The mediator. So there yeah. is a light and a darkness, but you don't have to. You can you can pull from both to be to be good and use the force. You don't have to be, right. you know, Satan or, or right. Jesus. Like it, there's, <laughs> there's people in the middle who, you, you don't know, have to be Satan or Jesus. You don't have to. I mean, if you want to, <laughs> whatever. If you want to. All right. Before we get super <laughs> religious with this, <laughs> that's just, just the, the let's bring it back to the I fantasy had. world that we're talking about. <laughs> yeah. So I read guardians of the wills, mm-hmm. the guardians of the wills book. Yeah over the weekend and I was surprised. It was actually really good. It wasn't, it was supposed to be like a young adult novel or something. Those like are that, all right? really good now, but yeah, I, I was surprised. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently it's, they're good now. It's a good thing. Um, but it talked in there. Um, uh, cheer it talked about how a, like a balance is necessary. Yeah. In the force. Like you have to have both the dark and the light. Like there's mm-hmm. a, in in Jeddah, there was a piece of the temple that was something like Shadow Alley, or I don't know, <laughs> Shadow <laughs> Row. I don't remember what it was. There was there was a sure. piece of the temple that was that was built to represent, like it was always in a shadow, and it was built to represent the um, how the dark side of the force exists, and it's necessary to. Um, pull people to more of a balance. Yeah. You know, like you can't you have, have light without darkness. I right. Mean, right. Exactly. That was, there is, you know, light some creates, quote, light creates shadow. I mean that there's, if, right. You there's can't some have quote in the book darkness. along those lines. So, yeah. So like we've talked about before, the Jedi took it to one extreme and became these aloof dicks that couldn't sustain themselves. Holier than thou, <laughs> but they, you know, right. they were so good that they, didn't help anyone really because no one was worthy of their help, if you will. Yeah. I mean, maybe they helped. They did De- bring, again, like we've always said, depending on the Jedi. Peace. Yeah. They brought Some a level. Some of them were more extreme than the other, than others. I, on a, on, well, talking about the whole though. Yes. They did bring some level of peace, but they also, just because of the, what they believed and the fact that they existed, that that specific religion mm-hmm. existed, they probably brought on their demise, like what happened to yeah, them. Yeah. You know, this hatred against And them. like we keep saying, I think that's exactly what Luke is meaning in The Jedi Must End, is that the Yeah, he's the order, figured this out. The Order of the Jedi screwed it up. That book he has from, you know, paper ages of books in their world, <laughs> like, this was never what it was meant to be. Right. And I think with, like, with, with Rey and with Kylo, they both, there is that light in the dark, and Kylo was fighting right. between the two, trying to become dark and having almost trouble being evil, if you will. Yeah, like, he really had to fight for like it. Like, he was struggling to be bad. <laughs> He's like the nerd that's like, oh, I'm gonna wear leather. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what, I just, I don't know, whatever. I'm a biker now. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, he was trying really hard to be a bad guy, and he had to kill his dad to, to probably do it. Well, he's got plenty of leather. That's true. And then you've got Ray who doesn't even know that yet, but will I assume struggle with it at some point. Yeah. But I think Ray will be the first in that line of being taught. Yeah. What the balance, what the actual balance is. Right. Right. Which will, will be interesting. Right. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Time traveling, Michael. I agree. And we got to that really long, you know, diatribe off of talking about, Kylo and them being the two halves of the dark and the light. He's so awesome. <laughs> Did you actually sound like that when you were a teenager? At any point? No. No? 
Is it just, did, did your voice ever change? No. <laughs> That's what I thought. It always sounded <laughs> like this. We just have to turn on this weird, like, adolescent filter on our mixer that makes Michael sound <laughs> like a normal adult. It really tries to sound. <laughs> nope, that didn't it really work. Helps, man. <laughs> doesn't doesn't work at all. We gotta turn the filter up a little more. <laughs> all right, last last bad guy, Phasma. That hurt. hurts. Hopefully. Phasma. Hopefully. If you have not read the Phasma book, do it. It's fantastic. It's really the Phasma really good. comic came out recently. And the comic. I need to I need to start it. Uh, the number two issue comes out as of tomorrow. As of today, tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Figure that one out. Good luck. All right. So apparently, um, you know, Phasma will continue into The Last Jedi and that she'll have a more significant role in The Last Jedi. And only because, according to Ryan Johnson, she's just a really damn cool character. (laughs) Yeah. And uh, he wants to and he wants to see what they can do with her and put her in action and see what happens. Nice. But having read Phasma, the book. I want to see her in action as well because she's a complete and total badass Mm -hmm. who just likes killing, not necessarily for any other reason than to kill (laughs) people. (laughs) She seems to enjoy killing, not just when having to fight someone, but to kill them just because she can do that to them. (laughs) She's, she's rough. She was in the comic. The first issue is very, it feels really short. Like nothing, That's not a whole lot happens. It takes the, it takes place within the, uh, the it's, time it when it starts they, when she's in the compactor or when she gets dumped into the compactor, right? It's right after that. It's when okay. the resistance first gets there, uh, like this, the Poe and everybody. Mm-hmm. When they, when that attack first starts between that and the planet blowing up. That's the time. Okay. So it's, you know, it's not a whole lot of time. Yeah. But anyway, they, um, uh, um, she's a lot more like, I don't know, refined in a way well, she than has, she was sure in the she, book. Well, obviously in the book, she was a tribal person living on a planet, right. like sleeping in hammocks and jumping on rock spires, right. <laughs> but she's been with the first order now. And I mean, even, For even in the book when, when, um, daddy, daddy war <laughs> what's, what's, what's Hux's name? The daddy Hux. Brindle? Brindle Hux. Like when Brindle Hawk shows up, like she starts trying to talk like him and like be more refined and well, yeah, like immediately, like immediately picks it up yeah. and like wants to be not a savage, like tribal person anymore. Like she, right. so I th- I'm sure she worked to pick that up and be grand, if you will. Yeah. Uh, which, which, I mean, that's, I guess she got to where she wanted to be. But I mean, one of the points, one of the big story points in the comic now is like right away, she tries to pin uh, disabling the shields to, on somebody else. Yeah. Um, and she like wipes the, wipes the slate, like the wipes, wipes the, the, log the log that or... she did that, <laughs> that, that Finn forced her to do it. She wipes that log and immediately tries to pin it on somebody else and finds the dude on the planet and tries to kill him like right away, <laughs> like assassinate him. So and there's no, there's nothing that can be disputed about the situation. Exactly. Because the guy that did it yeah. is dead. And her log, the comic is her narrating her log. Okay. And it's her, like, you see what she's doing, but then, then her, her log, log is, is like, like totally opposite. Yeah. I tried to, you know, bring justice right away or, you know, <laughs> like that kind of joke. But it's, it's, yeah, it's pretty funny, but it's, it's more refined in a way that she's not, she's not only there just to kill people. <laughs> well, now she's in charge of training the older, yeah. jet, the older troops. She just wants, to, I don't know. It's not even like she she just doesn't even seem like she buys into the whole first order spiel. She just wants to train as much, people to kill. Yeah, she just wants to be a badass. I don't know. I don't know what I don't know what the motivation is beyond that. Yeah, because I mean, even in the book, her goal but, seemed to be to join the first order to just get out of being on a, a tribal person on the planet and just to be, be more refined, be trained to hone her skills and to train others to battle, yeah. to fight and kill. Like she, her, her goal is to kill. And yeah. that is what Phasma does best, which like uh, she wants to get, fine. I mean, even in the, you haven't finished the book yet. Have you? I'm real close, but okay. Yeah. 
Um, uh, you can, well, we'll talk about that later. Because the, okay. the ending of the book is really good, and it really it helps you understand her motivation, like where she's trying to get to. Okay. But anyway, we can talk about that later. Yeah, I'll finish it before next time. So yeah, Phasma is going to be in the movie more, which is fantastic, and we'll get to see her spear, fight with the spear. Her spear in action, which yep. I guess she, I mean... Now, having read the book and the fact that she was a tribal on a tribal planet and fought with the spears basically all the time, yeah, the spear makes, makes sense. It makes a lot more sense now. It's That's just the fact she has like a shiny, just a cool. shiny pole with a point, <laughs> nothing fancy at all because she doesn't need anything fancy to. Like, that's what I was saying before, not even having read the book yet. She does not need anything fancy to totally murder you. Yes. <laughs> because she'll just do it anyways. Yes. Um, yeah. I think we've talked enough about this. <laughs> sure. I mean, there's other random stuff about the bad guys. They have the giant ass dreadnought ship, which is like the size of a planet. Which, interesting enough, according to what the, the official picture on the data bank, mm -hmm. there are two giant guns. That's a supremacy, right? Uh, I don't remember what it's called. I think. Yeah, there's two giant cannons on the underside, like, mm -hmm. like, um, orbital cannons, I believe, to basically to, like, just fuck your shit up <laughs> yeah. from space. Take, just knock your planet out of alignment, essentially. Because the, the thing is the size, like, pretty much the size of a planet, a small planet. It's insane. It's not even, you know, it's not like the, the Death Star, but it's just like this giant, huge table in the sky. <laughs> Like if you if you think about the star destroyer that was floating over Jeddah, this thing, if you put star destroyers tip to tip, yeah. this thing is as wide as I think it was like sixteen star destroyers or something like that, tip to tip. Something like that. So imagine that thing floating over Jeddah and how massive that was floating over that city and that area. Now imagine this thing floating over like your hemisphere, basically, <laughs> is what it would do. Which is nuts. Yeah. That that thing can't land anywhere. I think we probably have mentioned that before. Like, there's there's no way. There's yeah. no there's no landing to get off of that ship. You you take a you take a transport to and from this giant flying <laughs> space table. Somebody um somebody superimposed the shape of the star destroyer over Manhattan, and it's like the Just size a of a regular star destroyer. No, this is this is the dreadnought. Okay. It's the size. It's like three quarters of the size of Manhattan. <laughs> Which is insanely <laughs> huge. Yeah. So so they they have Anyways. I mean, between that and then Kylo has a new uh, tie silencer and it's kind of like the tie interceptors. Uh, they like the advanced and the interceptors and they have lots of cool new equipment and ships and things that we'll get to see, like those giant gorilla walkers. So yeah, fancy, fancy stuff. So we've we've talked through everything the last Jedi we can before <laughs> next episode. And there's probably no more Star Wars news that's going to happen anytime soon. Unless we finally get a trailer. Will we finally get it? Will we actually get a Star Wars The Last Jedi trailer? I think that's next episode discussion because there's a whole thing about. We'll see. All right. When that could when that could be. Well, as always, you can find us on Twitter at Hokey underscore religion. You can find us on Facebook dot com slash you know, Hokey Religion. You can find us on YouTube. You can find us on Patreon at Patreon dot com slash Hokey Religion. If you would like to support the show to help us put that money back into the show to make the show better, we would greatly appreciate it. Send us a dollar. It's just as little as a dollar a month. And again, we have two episodes of our very first podcast from when we were 18 <laughs> and it's the worst time. thing ever. And, uh, if you really want to hear it, make it happen by helping us reach that goal on Patreon. I don't want it to happen. So don't <laughs> give any money to us cause it's really bad, but it's so bad that you probably want to hear it so that you can hate us forever. Like we already hate yeah, ourselves. You're telling people that hate us. They need to give us money. They're listening. If you hate us, <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> if you listen to this podcast, you probably hate us by now. We do. We don't listen to this <laughs> podcast, though. That's how much we hate us. No, uh, and you can always shoot us an email at asklobot at hokeyreligion.com. I think that's all the things we you, please you can leave hear us, us an anywhere iTunes, sounds are made. Please leave us an iTunes review. Yes, iTunes reviews are appreciated. Your reviews have been very helpful. So anyone who has not left a review, please. Yes, reviews are very helpful for other people to find the show, and it's also helpful for us to know hey. what we are and are not doing that's enjoyable. You know what? You, you don't even have to. Like, you can have. You can leave like a two word review. This good. <laughs> yes, yeah. and good is with just uh, with a U. Yes. Good. This good. 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 Just six letters, one space. Yes. Yeah. All right. 
That's it for this episode of Hokey Religion, episode 55. This is Tyler. Hokey this is Michael. Really, really, really. Goodbye. <laughs>